Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking about financial freedom as I am joined by John McGregor. John is an international best-selling author, global speaker, and leading wealth mentor. He uses brain-based systems to help people create lasting financial freedom. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. John, thank you so much for joining me today. An absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I love, 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 love the work you're doing. Thank you. I definitely love the work you're doing as well. And why don't you start off by telling the listeners a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Be happy to. Well, I've been in the personal finance industry for, gosh, going on 27 years now. And I wore a variety of hats. I've really circled the globe in this industry and I've seen a lot of things. And over the over my time period, I've probably worked with 5,000 people in some form or fashion of all walks of life, all demographics, all wealth ranges. And I walked away from that about seven years ago to really pursue my passion, which is solving this financial epidemic that's affecting more people than all diseases combined. And now I'm on a mission to solve this. And we have cracked the code on this. There's such a a problem in society today. So many people are suffering financially and it's affecting their entire lives. When you consider that 78% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, 78% of people, and this is worldwide, this is a real problem. And the current solutions simply do not and will not work. I lived it for a long time and I can get into that some more on what I see and then talk more about the solution, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Talk more about it, go deeper into it, and talk about why the stats getting worse, not better. Yeah, so uh, my the reason I left my private practice, a very lucrative situation, like I said, was to pursue this and really get to the core of what this problem is. Now, look, the our educational system has ignored financial education, completely ignored it, which is mind-boggling to me. In fact, it's criminal in my mind. Then you have the financial industry, which is really responsible for our financial wealth and, and, and well-being, right? And they're only interested in working with those people that have a lot of money, and their only answer is to sell a financial product. And people that are struggling financially, they do not need a financial product. They need something far greater and deeper than that. Then we have social media that's influencing, basically hypnotizing people to spend money to be someone they aren't to impress others. It's the perfect storm. And like I said, the current solutions don't work. So I left that out of my own frustration with my own clients, not making the changes they needed to make. A typical scenario would be I'd be sitting in my office and I'd be explaining to the client saying, look, if you continue doing what you're doing, you're going to continue to live on Payne Island. You will never be able to retire when you want to or the way you want to. And I would show them the graphs showing that they're headed to disaster and they would get all excited They would be nudging each other and they'd say, honey, we got to do something here. All right, John, what's the plan? We would lay out this detailed strategic financial plan and we'd schedule the follow-up meetings. I'd ask for additional information and we would would high five, we would pinky swear, we would hug, we would shake hands. And they gave me the absolute commitment that they were committed to the financial plan that we had just laid out. And by the time they leave my office, as soon as they leave my office, they're on their way to Best Buy to buy a new flat screen TV on an already maxed out credit card or to a new car dealership to buy a new car, which they don't need. In other words, all that financial planning and all that commitment had a, had a shelf life of about 15, 15 minutes before they're back to their old habits, their old behaviors, back to what I call living on Payne Island. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate to that, especially now with COVID and now the holidays coming up. It's a very, very stressful time. So I was extremely frustrated and I was expressing my frustration with my good friend, Robert Kiyosaki. He's the all-time best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he basically looked at me and he said, John, all that information you're shoving down your clients' throats or pouring into them doesn't do anything. And he said, because information does not 
cause transformation. And that was the aha moment because all this time I was just pouring more and more information into my clients, hoping and, and praying that they were going to make the right changes for themselves financially. But it doesn't work. Just like health and wellness, we all know we need to eat better and, and exercise, yet most people won't do it or most people don't do it consistently. This isn't an information issue. This is a behavioral issue. And the only way to change behavior is at the core of someone's mental programming. That's how we get people to change. And that's what we've done. That's what we've laid out in a process we call Thrive Path. And we're super excited and it's, it's having a, it's a real game changer. It's really, what we found is it's the missing link or the paradigm shift to what all other financial programs are missing. Well, tell us a little bit more, more about Thrive Path. Tell us how it works and what people can expect going through it. Yeah. So Thrive Path, I teamed up with a thought leader in the field of neuroscience, J.W. Wilson with the Learning Code Institute. And together, we designed a five element process, a neurological, biological approach to changing this behavior. What we did was we analyzed myself and, and how I became financially free at a very young age, actually at age 37, and how so many other successful people has, have become financially free as well. And what we did was we reverse engineered that and we just, and we came up with this five element process. It's really a journey of discovery. If that's probably the best way to describe it, we take people through it and really gets to the core of who people are, why they do what they do and helps them to become aware of what they're doing will never get them what they want. And it really changes like, again, at the core of their mental program, which, which we'll talk about. In the end, what it does is it completely helps people have a healthy relationship with money. That's the key because most people have an unhealthy relationship with money. And what that means is most people are using money to dull their pain rather than using money to fulfill their purpose. That was the key. That was the the aha moment that we had. And that's why we launched Thrive Path this five-element process to financial freedom and peace of mind. It's unlike anything else you've seen out there. Well, I know that you say that financial issues are greater than any epidemic or disease out there. Why do you say that? Yeah, I'm so glad you reminded me. Okay, so that's such a great question. So when you look at any research study, money is the number one cause of stress, right? And I'm assuming you're, you're, your listeners are, are feeling that or understanding that money is the root cause. It's the number one cause of stress. And stress is the number one cause of our most deadly diseases and health ailments. Stress leads to our six, six leading causes of death. Everything from cancer, lung ailments, cirrhosis of the liver, suicide, you go down the list. It's stress related. Stress also causes high blood pressure, irritability, anxiousness, nervousness, insomnia, and financial problems also cause divorce. It's the number one cause of divorce. And what does divorce cause? More stress. And so the other thing that people need to realize, and I didn't believe this statistic at first either, 75% of office physician visits are stress-related. 75% of physician visits are stress-related. And I saw that and I thought, there's no way. And when I looked it up, and I Google it, and I urge your listeners to do the same. What I realized is that a lot of these research studies will tell you that's a lot higher than 75%. So in other words, a lot of people are dealing with stress and money is the root cause. So, so when I say that 78% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, that's, that's over three quarters of the population are dealing with financial stress and it's affecting their lives. That's why in so many profound and, and, and terrible ways, that's why I say this is the biggest epidemic of, than all diseases combined. Add to that, stress creates in, in your brain, <clears throat> releases a hormone called cortisol. Now, cortisol can be a very important hormone for all of us, but too much cortisol can be extremely dangerous. And here's the kicker that a lot of people don't realize. Cortisol is also known as the belly fat hormone, and too much cortisol will cause fat to accumulate in your abdomen, because there's far more uh, fat inducing components of your belly than there are in any other part of your body. So your money stress is actually causing 
not only weight gain, but weight gain in that midsection that makes it so stubborn. So when you're financially stressed, trying to lose weight, get in shape, even sleep, all these things that we try to do on a regular basis is very impaired and very difficult to do. I hope that answers your question. It absolutely does. So you have a concept that you talk about that's called above the line, below the line. Yes. So explain that concept and talk about how that fits into the financial issues of people. Yeah, thanks for asking. That's sort of an overarching concept that I learned a long time ago and, 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 and modified it for the financial world. So the reason so many people are struggling in their life, not just financially, but generally, is that there's this concept called above the line and below the line. And most people are living below the line. Below the line are the products and the tools and the strategies and the tactics. This is, this is the Bitcoins, the multi-level marketing, you know, the, what stocks should I buy? All those kind of products and tactics and, and so forth. Above the line is your mindset. That's your vision. That's your mission. That's your goals. That's where most people should be spending most of their time. Unfortunately, most people spend 90% below the line and 10% above when in reality, it should be the reverse. When you analyze and study very successful and, and, and happy people and, and successful people, you will find that they spend most of their time above the line thinking about their vision and their mission and their goals, their vision of how they see themselves and their family and their future, and then their mission, what's their purpose in life, and then their goals. What are the goals that they need to do and accomplish in order to achieve their vision and their mission? Sadly, most people haven't even really thought about those things at all. They're looking for that quick solution, that below-the-line solution. And here's a, here's a perfect example. I had the opportunity to tour Europe and Asia with Robert Kiyosaki and you know these big mega financial conferences. And verily, I get these questions all the time, not even at these conferences. At the gym, I get these questions. They come up to me and they say, hey, John, what do you think about Bitcoin? Mutual funds should I be buying? What do you think about annuities? Should I get into multi-level market? What do you think about commercial real estate? You know, all of these kind of, uh, should I get into gold and silver? Should I day trade? And, you know, <sighs> Sadly, they're desperate. They're desperate for you know financial salvation because you know they're maxed out on their credit cards and they're just struggling. They don't know who they are in the world and they're looking for that golden, you know, that golden nugget that's going to bail them out. So they they go off and they spend thousands of dollars on these programs and they get home with you know this box of DVDs and workbooks and all this stuff and it's sitting on their kitchen counter and they're staring at it and they're going, oh gosh. They're hoping that something magical is going to jump out of this box and change their life. That's why I call it hope in a box. And they may watch a DVD or two, but ultimately that box of DVDs and workbooks ends up in the corner of their, of their living room. And now they feel even worse. They feel like an even bigger failure than they were beforehand. And now they're out three, five, seven, or even $10,000 on an already maxed out credit card. These below the line solutions actually are causing more harm than they are good. But here's the problem. And they go off depressed and they feel bad about themselves, et cetera. But here's the problem. 12 months later or whenever later, they come back and they're like, well, John, I tried Bitcoin and that didn't work out for me. Or I tried that and that's been, what do you think about XYZ? And they're on to the next uh, below the line solution. Again, thinking that something magical is going to happen in their life because they haven't addressed the above the line stuff. That's the problem. If they're just focused on below the line solutions, they're going to be on the ever ending treadmill and they'll never get out of the rat race for the most part. Some might, but the most will not. Now, look, I got to say, those below the line tools and solutions and tactics, those can all be great, but they are secondary to above the line. That's why I focused Thrive Path on above the line, getting people's mindset, getting the relationship with money healthy making sure they understand how their beliefs are driving their decision-making, understanding what's deeply meaningful to them at their core, understanding, making them aware that what they're doing in life, how they're acting, who they're spending time with, where they're spending their money will never get them what they want. Incorporating rituals into their life and then also mentorship. That's all above the line. Once you have that dialed down, what we've seen is that almost any of those below the line solutions would be successful. Now you're ready for those things. That's what you need to do first. 
But if you just go below the line first, it's like putting the cart in front of the horse. Rarely will ever, ever work. That's why Thrive Path is really the missing link to what people really need. Sorry, that was a long-winded answer. <laughs> oh, no, that was a great answer. Let's talk about some of the key barriers that people face when trying to get off Pain Island. Yeah, that's it's like we had a conversation before this. Yeah. <laughs> Your questions are spot on. So the first element in Thrive Path are beliefs. And most people in general, not just financial, but in general in their life, have harmful and destructive and self-sabotaging beliefs. Most people have accumulated their beliefs from the time they were nearly born, and they're almost hardwired or pretty much hardwired by the time they're in their mid-20s and certainly their early 30s. And like I said earlier, sadly, research tells us that most people's beliefs in any aspect of their life are negative and disempowering, but more so in particular in their financial life. And these beliefs are running nonstop 24-7 in their subconscious mind, like a computer program on autopilot. It's running in the background, controlling everything, how someone thinks, how they act, how they behave, and ultimately their beliefs become their destiny. And again, I just need to say this again, that most people's beliefs are self-sabotaging and destructive. And I always say, if you change your beliefs, you can change your life forever. So this is the main barrier, why people are struggling financially, and they're not even aware of it. So in the financial world, there are all kinds of beliefs, harmful beliefs that people have. And I could just list off a few, you know, money's the root of all evil. Uh, It's too complicated. I'll never get rich. I was never educated. I didn't come from money. I was not good in math. I got to have that Rolex or I got to drive a nice car or I got to have the new iPhone. These are all beliefs that are driving people to make harmful financial decisions. What happens, and I write about this in my book, it's called, we call it the bear trap. It's an acronym, B-E-A-R. The B stands for those harmful beliefs. Once you have that harmful belief that I got to have that new iPhone, then you start coming up with excuses on why you need to buy it. Then you take the, and that's the E. Then the A is the action. You go out and you spend money that you don't have on an already maxed out credit card for something you don't really need, but you've conditioned your mind to convince yourself, to lie to yourself that you do in fact actually need that new 13 Pro iPhone. (laughs) Then the result is, that's the R of the bear. The result is, as you can guess, That's the tragic circumstances. That's the continued financial stress. That's the continued health problems, weight gain, all the other things that are connected with stress. So that cycle just perpetuates and people never get off that financial treadmill. And it all starts with people's beliefs. And if there's one takeaway for your listeners today, I would really have people challenge their beliefs, spend some time write down all their beliefs about their money, what, how they view money, what they think money is, or what they think financial retirement you know, is or is for them. That's what I should say. Or what is money to them? And write down as many beliefs they have around money. And then I want people to go and just look at each one of those beliefs and ask themselves, is this belief 100% true? And really ponder that fact. Then I want them to ask themselves, where did this belief come from? Because a lot of our beliefs that we have come from people that really didn't have our best interests at heart. So people go through this and they start becoming aware, like, oh my gosh, these beliefs are just running and ruining my lives. They're not even true. In fact, they're lies I've been telling myself for years. And that's why I'm in this financial predicament I am. And then the last question people should ask is, what would my life be like? without that belief. And I will tell you, that's when I've seen this aha moment, this moment where people just go, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I had no idea that I was doing these things without my awareness. I wasn't even aware. And that awareness moment is just so, so powerful. It's a game changer. And what I always say, and I'll wrap with this, is when you can become aware of these beliefs, when you Awareness is extremely power because when you're aware, you can control the outcome. But when you're not aware, things will always control you. And that's why this exercise is just so, so powerful. Let's talk about the differences between people that thrive and people that just survive. 
Another, and it kind of goes back, another great question. It kind of goes back to the above the line, below the line. Most people, and, and, and you know, I will, I will address some of the below the line uh, things that people are doing, um, the specific things that people are doing and things that they can do. In fact, I just did a video on this. But again, most people are stuck. They're looking for the quick fix, the, the, the shiny object at the end of the rainbow, hoping that something magic is going to appear. Whereas you look at the successful people, those people that are thriving in life, they are focused almost exclusively on their vision and their mission and their goals. Once they have that set, that dialed in, then the rest is much easier. Then you can get into the flow of life and the zone of life. Then you can tackle any one of those below the line solutions. But I will say there are below the line things that people can be doing. And this is something that this is actually very timely. We're having this conversation because because the end of the year is coming up and we got a new year coming in 2022 and, and a lot of changes going on. And now is the time for people to really start thinking about how they're living their lives, what their behaviors are, and how do their behaviors relate to their ultimate vision? Because even though these are non-financial suggestions I'm going to give you, all of these things trickle into your financial life and your decisions. And when you study these successful individuals, they will tell you um, and, and show you that how they live their life plays a critical role in how successful they become. And this has nothing to do with financial education or financial literacy, nothing whatsoever. So one suggestion I always throw out to people is turn off your music and turn on a podcast or a YouTube video or, or you know, listen to this podcast, or listen to an audio book. I spend an hour and a half to two hours a day at the gym. I get two hours of audio time every single day. And that doesn't count my commutes and other times that I'm just... I'm working outside or what have you. So I'm reading almost a book a week, if not more so. So I'm constantly educating myself. And I used to tell myself that lie that I needed music to be motivated in the gym. That is not true. That's one of those harmful beliefs that we talk about. And I'll tell you, if someone just took, turned off their music and started listening to some education, that can be an absolute game changer. I don't know any successful people that are listening to music. And by the way, by the way, for those that think they need music to exercise or do cardio or what have you, I kill myself on the Stairmaster. That's my cardio machine. And if I was listening to music, I could not last as most in what I'm hearing. And therefore, I can mask the pain of my workout, if you, can, if you know what I'm talking about. So, so anyway, that's one thing someone can do. The other thing is, is, is cut out social media or severely limit social media. Too many people are spending way too much time on social media. In fact, I would suggest take a social media day off. I fell into that trap a long time ago. And I finally realized how much time I was spending on social media. It was ridiculous. Now I limit it to the morning just so I can see what's going on, kind of check my messages and, and DMs and so forth. But that has freed up so, so much of my time. The other thing I would recommend is wake up an hour earlier than you're used to. That will add seven hours to your, to your week of extra time where you can be productive and 28 hours to, to a month, which is over a day of extra time you could be focused on your vision. But I wouldn't start off right away setting your alarm an hour earlier. Start with five-minute increments. So tonight, set it for five minutes less. Let that go for a week then another five minutes and so forth. So it's not a shock to the system. And then lastly, I'll just throw out, given that this is the new year coming up, really start, I would encourage people to really start thinking about their vision, how they want, how do they foresee themselves? What do they want for their lives going forward in the near and distant future? And write that down, put it on a three by five card and put it everywhere that you are, whether it's the kitchen, sorry, the refrigerator, your your bathroom window, your car dashboard, your office, wherever you are, you want to remind yourself con consistently on what your vision is. So those are just a couple of below the line things. But uh, you know, going back to the original question, why are people surviving versus thriving? Again, it's not education. It's not literacy or anything like that. It's people that are focused above the line, the vision and the mission and the goals. Those are the ones that are thriving. Talk about the role that neuroscience plays with people that are having financial issues. Yeah, great question. And that's what Thrive Path is all about. 
It's a, it's a neurologically based process that gets to the core of why people are suffering financially. Look, any change you desire in your life, anything, anything you want to change in your life comes to the, it's from the brain, right? Not information. If information was all we needed to be successful and happy and healthy, if information was, was the only thing we needed to transform our lives, we'd all be rich, skinny, and happy, right? But no, it takes a, information is just this small piece of what transformation actually occurs. It all starts in the brain. And here's the problem. Your brain, that information superhighway is the most powerful tool in the universe, right? It differentiates us from all species. It's what allows us to become and do and achieve almost anything that we set our minds to. The problem is our brain not only works for us, but it can work against us. And and the reason is, is that we have different parts of our brain that work in different ways. The most evolved part of our brain is called the prefrontal cortex. This is where the higher thinking, the higher functioning, the learning is. And that's where rich people spend most of their time. Brain power is in a prefrontal, that most evolved part of the brain. This is the part of the brain that really focuses us on our vision and, and really focuses on, on our mission and so forth. And this is where you want to be in this prefrontal cortex. The problem, problem is we have a competing part, which is the least evolved part of the brain, and that's called the reptilian brain, or it's the, the part of the brain that, 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 uh, resembles closer to a lizard than anything else. This is the part of the brain that makes us lash out when we're in traffic. This is the part of the brain that makes us reactive rather than thinking about our decisions and thinking about what we should be doing. And the problem is when we're stressed, all our brain function, not all of it, but a majority of it goes into this reptilian mode. And when you're in reptilian mode and you're stressed, your IQ will actually drop. That's right. Your financial stress will make you, stress in general, will make people dumb as well as those other things that are happening because you're spending a lot of time in that reptilian mode. That reptilian mode was designed for survival, right? But we're no longer in, you know, we're we're no longer hiding from saber-toothed tigers. That's the problem with financial stress is that it's forcing you into reptilian mode. And, and that's the neurobiological part of this. That's what Thrive Path was designed is to get you out of reptilian mode or that lizard mode and into that prefrontal cortex. Research also shows us there are about 6,000 genes in our brain. And when a majority of those are stimulated in the correct way, that's when you can enhance and, and enhance your behavior and your learning in a significant manner. And that's what we designed Thrive Path to do with my partners. Um, is to stimulate your brain so that you can stimulate those 6,000 genes in the correct way so people can get out of reptilian mode and into that prefrontal cortex and that higher thinking mode. That answers your question. It does. Now, you talked a little bit about your book, but you know, you're an international best selling author. So tell us about your book or books and what people can expect when they read each one and where they can get them. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So this was a. A journey that I never would anticipate writing a book, and it would blow my English teachers' minds. But um, it was a, it was an idea from Robert Kiyosaki, and I had been sharing with him a lot of stories of people that had everything and then lost it all, and, and he was really intrigued by this. And it was in his in his encouragement to write this book, the top ten reasons why the rich go broke, and he wrote the forward for it. But all of this book um, is alluring stories of why the rich got broke. The book is really about why so many struggle financially, why so many normal people, you know, average income people struggle financially, why so many people cannot get off pain island or get out of the rat race. So there's two ways to deliver information. You could push information in or you can pull information out with a story. And as Robert always says, a good story can change the world. And and these are 10 very alluring, very emotional stories of people that I knew firsthand that had it all and then lost it all due to a common underlying psychological issue, the bear trap, as I just described. And the bear trap is the commonality of why so many people struggle. And again, it all starts with the beliefs. So it's a real, it's a, I think the reason it's been so well received and it's a bestseller is it's a journey through 10 revealing real life stories. And it offers sort of intimate access of why so many people struggle. And we launched it in China of all places in 2019. I was speaking there 
And uh, it just flew off the shelf very quickly. And then it's done very well in Japan. And it's now done very well here in the, in the US. And the overarching message of this is learning from people's successes is smart, but learning from people's mistakes is genius. That's where real learning happens. It's the mistakes. And by sharing these stories, it's a, it's a real powerful way for people to really absorb and feel the emotion in these stories rather than just showing them information, which I've told you, which I've suggested does not really work. And, and I think that's why this book has been so well received. So thanks for asking that. Do you have any upcoming projects or current oh. projects that you're working on that people need to know about? Yeah, thanks. Um, and by the way, people can get my book for free on my website. They just need to pay shipping and handling, or of course it's on Amazon. But to, uh, to answer your question, yeah, we are always working on projects. We just launched our online course called It's Thrive Path, The Revolutionary Process to Your Financial Freedom and Peace of Mind. And it is a paradigm shift in any other financial program that, uh, that's out there. And, and we've studied, I think we've studied them all. And it's all focused primarily above the line. And we are hosting master classes. Yeah, free free online masterclasses if, if people want to learn more and learn more about the process. Those are available. We've got two more in December and then we're we're done for a while. And then I'm, my next book, which will come out shortly, is the reverse of this book. It's the top 10 reasons the broke get rich. I'm explaining how people go from you know suffering financially to prospering financially. And then I have a third book that's almost done and, and that's called Wired for Wealth. And hopefully that'll be done by uh, by the summer of next year. And then just more speaking opportunities. The, the speaking opportunities are starting to uh, to open up now that COVID is hopefully under control, despite this new variant. Well, go ahead and throw out your contact information. How can people connect with you? Check out your books, get your class, social sure. media, all that stuff. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, people can get access to all this on my website at johnmcgregor.net. So it's J-O-H-N-M-A-C-G-R-E-G-O-R.net. And people can get my book and the course. And I've got a lot of free information, free downloads that people can download immediately. And that'll really help them. They, they can start their journey to financial freedom and peace of mind immediately with those uh, with those downloads. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for plugging that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I'd like to thank you for the wealth of knowledge that you shared and give you the opportunity to give us some final thoughts or touch on anything that I left out before we close it out. The, the only thing I would end with is I just want people to realize that there is hope. There is a solution to their financial problems, despite how, how much, how much they're, they're, they're suffering financially. There is an absolute solution. I've seen it firsthand. It is never too late to transform your financial life. It's not a, most people, People have the most powerful tool is the, is, is the power of choice, not chance. People have the power to choose their financial future, and it is never too late to start their journey to financial future, freedom and peace of mind. Please don't give up hope. Ladies and gentlemen, johnmcgregor.net. Please follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. I'm sure you know somebody that's having financial issues and that could use the knowledge that was shared during this episode and Android listeners go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. John McGregor, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Just so thankful for all the work you're doing. Thank you so much. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. dream.